To make this kind of a working car, you will need to have a box lid, some thin card, usually the kind that comes in the back of writing pads. You will need a pencil, a paper cutter, a hole punch, some glue, some straws, some cardboard wheels that you can cut out of any kind of cardboard box. And finally, you'll need to have an electric glue gun. In my own teaching career, and as I travel around the country, I see lots of examples where people have made cars with very young children, and have cardboard wheels that are quite expensive, and to be honest, they're just glued onto the side, and once it's permanently glued, that wheel will not turn. The whole point of what I'm showing you now is that you can make, with a little bit more preparation, cars that actually work, which will show the children what friction is, how you can have load bearing, and a whole series of technological ideas that will be able to continue on throughout the whole of their educational career. In essence, a car consists of a body with wheels that move around. And rather than glue them straight on, you need to put a hub where you can place the axle in. And I'll show you how to do that. In the back of writing pads, such as this, or where it's, in this case it's uh, art paper, you'll find that there is a piece of card. Now this piece of card at the back is to keep all of the paper clean and rigid, but it's exactly the right sort of thickness to use to make a hub to carry the axle. What you need to do is you need to take all of the paper that you will be using in the construction of these cars and you now have a piece of card that you can use. In general, I can't give precise measurements, in general this hub that you're making should be at least twice the depth of the, of the box that you're using or in the case of paper girders twice the depth. So what you need to do is you need to take this card and turn it into hubs on the side of the car. To do that, you need to use a paper cutter and it's necessary to uh, measure the width of this piece of card. And in this case, it's 140 millimeters. So you can take that and place it inside of here. Place it on the mark that is seven centimeters and you cut it just to make sure that's it. So you've got two pieces of card which are exactly the same width. And now I would say that to cut that you need to think about how wide that will be. Well usually the width of a, a ruler is, is pretty good, either a steel rule or in the case of plastic rules. So you need to measure that off. And what you're actually doing when you're measuring this off, you're using some quite precise measurements, the exact width of the ruler. And when you come to cut this, you've got quite a precise and accurately made piece of card. And as it turns out, that makes exactly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you have seven hubs that you can have. You place this into your paper cutter and if you think about it, it's very precise. This is at 90 degree angle to the line that's being cut. You cut those out. And you know for a fact that each and every one of these is roughly the same size and the same shape. And that comes uh, in very handy when it comes down to actually making the cars. So these, in essence, are going to be taken and stuck onto the side of the car like that. Since you have a right angle here 
and you have a right angle at this hub when you stick that on on each side hopefully when you come to make the hole you'll find that the the place for the axle is in exactly the same place to make the hole for the axle you use an ordinary hole punch and again you'll see that when you lay these pieces of card one on top of each other they're almost exactly the same size so my usual suggestion is to cut uh, two at once if you look inside of this paper cutter you've got the stand that holds it in place if you take the pieces of card place it inside the hole cutter so that it rests firmly against the back in line with the place where the hole cutter is held in place under the base you push it down and there you've got two holes that are in exactly the same place so you come to attach these hubs under the side of the card one there and one there and as near as you can manage to do it you're going to have the two holes running in exactly the same place and hopefully that the straw once it's gone through will be able to hold it in place and run as straight as is possible remember this is only a paper car you cut out four of those I'll just show you one more time in total you place it inside of the hole cutter rest it against the back of there put it in line and if there isn't a line there well you could draw a line which would make it easier for you to do just press it down and you've got two holes in exactly the same place what you've got now are these hubs that will hold the axles and they're all exactly the same size or as near as you can possibly manage you can see that there are seven there together but the hole is all in the same place quite often when you're attaching these it's always best to place the uh, axle so that it's as close to the front as possible to, s to spread the the weight the straws that you're going to use will fit inside of there and it's quite a snug fit what you need to do is you need to make sure that you take a pencil and you push the pencil in through the hole and you can push it the full distance inside or if you have a crayon you can push it inside the hole itself will still be in the same place but what you've got now is you've got less of a, a, a tight fit so that the axles can move freely inside of that hole whereas when you haven't done it they can move but it's not quite the same and it does make a big difference to the way that the cars perform these two pieces of card are going to make the hub to place the axles and to do this you need to glue it on I find that uh, ordinary PVA is the best for this remember you've done them in pairs so you'd be placing one at the bottom and one at the top you need to place a, a good amount of glue on here now there's different ways of doing this you can actually use a dispenser like this or you could place some card uh, cutoffs and place them on top place it on top and then again as I've said you place that so it's as close to a 90 degree angle as you possibly can put it on there and remember you have them in line so you put some glue on here so that the two holes will be in place in the same place when it comes down to it and again you make sure that that's in place and so on and you place the four holes here like that. when you've applied the hubs to the the front of the the box and you've made the hole slightly bigger using the pencil what you can do now is you can attach the wheels unfortunately I've tried all sorts of different ways of doing this and there, there doesn't seem to be any way around it you have the straw and what you need to do is you need to cut it so that you've got maybe about a centimeter or so either side free like that and what you're going to do is I would say that you would need to prepare this as an adult you would need to take a glue gun take your straw and your wheel and you need to apply the smallest drop of glue that you can into the middle of the the wheel 
making sure that there's not too much excess flying about you push the straw inside of there so that it just appears on the other side you twist it around a little bit and you turn it until it solidifies that's it now we can't have wheel tracking on uh, something like this so what you do is you turn that round and you make two of those so that they almost look like a lollipop but you've done the in inverted commas dangerous part uh, while the children weren't there they've had the uh, the task of gluing the hubs in place making sure that they're there and they've left them to dry and what you do now is you allow them when it's dried to thread that through obviously you, you'll have made two you thread that through like so and they'll stand it up like this and then just take one that's been cut properly to size that. they can thread that through and immediately they can see that these wheels actually turn they do actually turn they will turn quite freely but obviously they need to have the other um, wheels attached and again let's take one wheel the smallest drop inside and perhaps this is an activity to do in a small group in a control situation you can't really have 30 children all standing in front of you like that you turn that around what will hopefully happen is that the centrifugal force will centre that wheel and obviously with a, an electric glue gun that doesn't take that long to dry and the second wheel at the back smallest drop inside making sure to reduce how much there is left over that, and if there's anything that might make a or cause friction obviously if you've used a crayon uh, on the holes in the hub then this will flow even freer and it also brings in the idea to the children that they've got um, to reduce the friction by using something slippy there's a, a whole lot of language that goes with um, with making a car there you go and that's set and now you've got a car that moves and I know that it takes a lot more preparation on your part to make the hubs perhaps to, to glue the wheels initially but the children will have made and have taken part in something they will, they will have need to have been as accurate as they possibly can by placing the hubs in the right place but there is one more thing that you can do and to give this instead of it just being a car you can make this into something that can be powered and to do that you need to make a sail to make a sail that you can attach to the top uh, of the car you need a sheet of A4 paper this does not have to be accurately done so I would recommend that the children get experience of having to fold you need to fold one corner over to the side like so flatten it down and here it's very important for the children to use the correct language and you use a ruler and you make what's called a hard fold like so, so you fold it over like that you take it and you fold that corner over to the other side and again either using a ruler or your thumb you make a hard fold here you take a pair of scissors and cut off this piece of paper open it up you have a square and the square has been divided into four triangles and to make the sail you get the children and if they're very young what you would do is you would take a pen and say you need to cut on top of that line there so they have a, a guideline and they know to stop when it comes to the center you cut along that fold and you take that one triangle and place that triangle upon the other one and now you've made a small pyramid now after this uh, this thing that I've just been showing you how to make a car I'm going to show you what you can do with these pyramids and to make the pyramid permanent you can either staple it and here as part of technology it's talking about use of the correct equipment 
but I would recommend that they glue. You draw a line, a thin line of glue and a zigzag line in the middle. Place that triangle on top of the other triangle, press it down and there you have a seal. Because that seal can then be taken and placed on top of the car. You place it on top of the car and then when this is glued on that can be used to power the car. Now you can either use the different slopes and ramps or different surfaces to see how far the cars can go but here you place and for expediency here I'll just put a small drop of hot glue on here to glue it in place on the top of the car but you can use PVA with this you stick that on top of the car and even in the short space of time that we've been doing this if I blow on that it blows the car further on and there you have it a fully working mobile car that can be used and made by young children as I said earlier you can use these pyramids in all sorts of different ways if you make them in different colours uh, and the same material you can use them to make a display what you would do is you would make your triangles you would get sorry you would make your pyramids you would take um, a, a plate and put some glue in it and you would take it and put it down and that can be stuck onto uh, a display board and I use this to do well to describe and make understandable the idea of triangular numbers if you think about it you've got something that has a triangular shape at its base so you get the children to make these and you show them that the first number in triangular numbers is one but then the next number in triangular numbers is three because it takes three to make that full triangle so the progression goes one and then three on the next number I can only tell you from my own experience children enjoyed this and it made the idea of triangular numbers completely understandable to them as well as being a very tactile thing to do and the next number in the triangular progression is five one three and five and you could ask them how many would it take to make a complete triangle with the next number of pyramids it does look effective and as in this case uh, you, you can use uh, the colours of the rainbow, you can do it in all sorts of different ways.